Love triangles aren't anything new in storytelling. They can induce an eye roll since many of us have come across so many love triangles and love squares and hexagons that it no longer feels fresh or original. It can feel like a forced obstacle that writers put in because they think people want that, and it feels even more pointless when we know who will end up together anyway. That's why any variation on this trope is so refreshing. Today, I want to talk about one scene in particular that adds some nuance to this trope. One that hit me in a way I wasn't expecting. It comes from one of my favorite animes, The World's Greatest First Love. On the surface, we have your typical love triangle. We know from the premise and the marketing that the two main characters will eventually end up together and the third person doesn't even stand a chance. But towards the end of the anime, the show decides to shine a light on the third wheel, a side character. And it's because this scene was included and that's impactful as it is, that it stands out as one of my favorite scenes, not just in the show, but in all of animation. Today, I'm going to break down that one scene in the world's greatest first love. Unlike the scene I covered in my Amphibia video, this scene takes place much later in the show and requires a lot more background and context to fully understand the significance. So full spoilers ahead for seasons 1 and 2 of the world's greatest first love. If you want to watch the series for yourself, I highly encourage it and it's currently available on Funimation and Crunchyroll in the US. The World's Greatest First Love is a boys' love manga and anime series. The show centers around Onodera Ritsu and Takano Masamune, high school lovers who broke up 10 years prior to the series because of a misunderstanding that left them both individually scarred. They now work in the manga industry, with Takano as Onodera's boss. The series is about them slowly rekindling their relationship. Throughout the run, we have this recurring character, Yokozawa Takafumi, a tough, no-nonsense manga salesman who happens to be Takano's longtime friend from college. We slowly realize that he's the main antagonist of the series, continuously trying to keep Onodera and Takano apart. He and Onodera repeatedly butt heads at work. Yokozawa later reveals to us that he and Takano briefly dated in college. Takano was so depressed from his breakup with Onodera that he didn't take care of himself. So Yokozawa cooked for him until he got back on his feet, even taking ownership of Takano's cat. Because of all this, Yokozawa is fiercely protective of Takano, frequently warning Onodera to stay away from him so he doesn't get hurt again. It gets to a point where Yokozawa refuses to respect Onodera even at work, and Takano eventually catches on to this. All this history and bitterness leads to the confrontation in episode 23, the penultimate episode of the series, as of the time I'm making this video. Here, Takano tells Yokozawa, with no room for interpretation, that he loves Onodera and that he will end their friendship if Yokozawa does not stop interfering. Yokozawa tries to fight back at first, insisting that Onodera just wants to hurt him, but Takano demands that Yokozawa stop meddling in his love life. And upon hearing this, Yokozawa pauses, scrunches his eyes, and finally breaks. As the soundtrack swells, all his emotions and pent-up feelings of rage, hope, and desperation pour out. He opens up about being in love with Takano this whole time. One translation says that he fell in love when Takano, despite not being nice to most people, still opened up to Yokozawa, and only Yokozawa. Another translation has him saying he loved Takano because Yokozawa himself has such a scary demeanor that deters most people, except Takano, who kept him by his side as his most trusted friend. In either case, Yokozawa has been in love with him since then, and he figured that Takano would eventually return his feelings as long as Yokozawa stayed by his side. In his mind, he was with Takano at his lowest point and only he would know how to love and care for him properly. Yokozawa sees himself as the reason why Takano is standing proudly and healthy today. He basically saved him after Onodera hurt him, so how could he possibly still pick Onodera after all this time? Yokozawa's been forced to realize he had no chance at all, and as he's pushed into a corner, the background track intensifies, 
and Horiyuchi can use voice acting commands a last ditch effort to win Takano over, a desperate plea that ultimately falls empty. Yokozawa is no longer the tough as nails wild horse of Madokawa Publishing. He's a vulnerable, broken human being who has finally lost all hope, even as he cries out, begging to be in the right one last time. As the climax of the music dies down, Yokozawa catches his breath, ashamed that he, of all people, completely gave into his emotions and admitted his deepest feelings to the person he loves fully, yet never had a chance with. Takano reaffirms his love for Onodera. Yokozawa shakes and quivers, finally recognizing that he has lost, once and for all. In a softer voice, and with a depressing background track to match, he relents that he has no choice but to give up. He still wants to be friends, but he needs some time to himself. As Takano apologizes, Yokozawa dismisses it. Now he's forced to let go of something he's been holding on to for 10 years. There isn't much catharsis or optimism. He leaves the room and heads back to his office, broken, defeated, and devoid of all hope. What makes this scene so impactful is that instead of othering the third piece of the love triangle, the show dedicates a whole monologue that humanizes him in his losing moments. And it's heartbreaking because in Yokozawa's defense, Takano really was destroyed from the breakup. He literally couldn't take care of himself in college. He wasn't eating, and he hooked up mindlessly with countless women. Yokozawa isn't lying or exaggerating when he says that he helped Takano get back on his feet. He learned to cook in order to take care of Takano. All things considered, it's understandable that he wouldn't want the very person who hurt Takano in the first place to date him again. We don't see how Yokozawa reacts when Takano is dating other people, but in the case of Onodera, Yokozawa has valid reasons for wanting Takano and Onodera to be apart. He knows how bad it was, and he really doesn't want his friend to get hurt again. At the same time, though, Yokozawa has been harboring this one-sided love for almost 10 years, and he hadn't actually considered Takano's own feelings. Takano himself admits that he never really saw themselves as lovers back in college, further emphasizing the one-sided nature of their relationship. In this moment, Yokozawa knows he's lost, and he may not have had a chance to begin with, and he cries out anyway. Yokozawa is no longer just an obstacle for the main couple to overcome. He's not just a plot device to fulfill the love triangle trope. He's his own established character, a living and breathing person with his own motivations, mindset, and personality. He is not just acting to set the plot in motion. He's acting because of his own feelings and experiences. His love for Takano and personal insecurities are just as tangible as the thoughts and feelings of a real-life person. And the best part of all this? It doesn't even end there. Oh no, we don't just end the scene with Yokozawa in defeat. We follow him as he returns to his office. For the first time in the show, we step into his world. We see his office and his co-workers. This is the first and only scene where he is the main character. He is in the spotlight now. He lashes out at his co-worker when he's reminded that Onodera won at the end of it all. It's the end of the show, and we're learning about his world. We leave up on the scene with him feeling dejected and his eyes red from heartbreak. The next time we see him, he gives Onodera his blessing to date Takano. But this turns out to be the setup for Yokozawa's developing relationship with Kirishima, which is explored in the light novels and movie adaptation, Yokozawa Takafumi no Bai, or The Case of Yokozawa Takafumi. This series did the ballsiest thing I've ever seen. It shines a spotlight on a side character in the penultimate episode of the season, and we don't even know if we're getting more material. The level of depth and detail given to this one character in this one scene is astounding. He's not just discarded in favor of the main couple, he's actually fleshed out and given his time to shine, both in this scene and the subsequent movie, and I appreciate him more with every rewatch. 
while we still see him angry about losing and then eventually coming around, like in most shows with the love triangle trope, we also get this emotionally raw scene where he completely breaks down in defeat. It kind of comes out of nowhere, and no one was really asking for this. You could even argue that the show doesn't need this scene. The plot doesn't change its trajectory if it was left out. Takano could still just reject him. And yet the show is all the better for including this scene. I adore this series, and I will advocate for a season 3, 4, movies, etc. until we get them. This series is, in my opinion, severely underrated. It has so much heart and humor and relatability, and some really intense, well-done scenes, like the one I just discussed in this video, and I wish more people talked about it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more Sekaiishi content, let me know in the comments down below. Take care, everyone!